Kai Jones signed a 10-day contract, and presumably he'll be able to get things started with the Sixers on Saturday against his former team. The Kai Jones' that. revenge game? Yeah, maybe. Hey, you know, have a career high against him. The NBA is witnessing an insane comeback, and to be honest, I'm really rooting for this individual because he has so much talent, but clearly suffered some sort of mental break. And it was 100% a mental break. That's what I truly believe. If you disagree, then that's fine. But in this video, we're going to document the promising career of Kai Jones. Before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. A look right over here, you'll see all of these wonderful human beings that have been able to make some money by playing prize picks. And I give away my picks for free each and every day on my Instagram at the Flight Mike and Snapchat at Flight Mike Snap. And right now they're hooking up my subscribers fat when you use my promo code Flight Mike when you sign up for prize picks. And thank you, prize picks for the sponsor. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Born in the Bahamas, Kai Jones moved to the United States when he was just 11 years old. Although he was originally a track athlete with aspirations of being a long jumper, a massive growth spurt caused him to pursue basketball. Kai would pick up a basketball for the first time when he was 15 years old, which set him on a path for the NBA. He'd eventually make his way to Orlando Christian Prep for his senior year of high school, where he played next to future NBA first round pick Nasir Little. Kai played a key role in the team's run to winning the Florida Class 3A Championship, attracting over a dozen Division I scholarship offers. He elected to play a post-grad season at Brewster Academy in New Hampshire, where his recruiting profile began to rise even further. A four-star recruit, he was the second best player in New Hampshire and cracked the top 50 nationwide for the class of 2019. During his season with Brewster, he committed to Texas on Twitter, setting the stage for his final stop before the NBA. Ty Jones didn't really get a lot of opportunity there, at least at first. As a freshman at Texas, Kai's playing time was fairly limited, playing less than 17 minutes per game while scoring less than 4 points per game. A modest start to his college career, Kai showed flashes of what he could become with his athleticism and establishing himself as one of the Big 12's top shot blockers. He clamored for more playing time with head coach Shaka Smart saying that Jones had the best work ethic of any player of his size that he's ever coached. As a sophomore, Kai would get his opportunity. His playing time shot up to nearly 23 minutes per game while he ended up averaging 8.8 .8 points and 4.8 Eight rebounds per game. He was once again one of the conference's top rim protectors and won the Big 12 Sixth Man of the Year award. Kai's athleticism was still a major threat, but his on-court IQ also improved substantially with shooting percentages increasing from the floor beyond the three-point line. His tangible improvement in his sophomore season made him an intriguing NBA prospect. And after the season, Kai Jones announced that he would be entering the 2021 NBA draft. It wasn't much of a surprise considering many mock drafts had Jones going in the first round and some even in the lottery. After all, Kai was an athletic big man that had rim protecting ability that also was stretching his range to beyond the arc. With a little bit more work, it wasn't the furthest stretch to believe that one day Kai Jones could be an all-star because he was the prototypical NBA-sized center. On draft night, the New York Knicks drafted Jones with the 19th overall pick, although they did so on behalf of the Charlotte Hornets, who had acquired that pick in a trade. Even though he had spent two seasons in college, Jones entered the league as somewhat of a raw project, but he was drafted on potential alone. His athletic ability and size gave him a high ceiling on the perpetually rebuilding Charlotte Hornets, where he wasn't expected to produce right away, but at the very minimum, he could be a lob threat for LaMelo Ball. In fact, Jones would end up playing more G League games with the Greensboro Swarm than in the NBA with the Hornets. He appeared in just 21 games with Charlotte, playing in just three minutes per game. But in Greensboro, he was a walking double-double, averaging 18 points, nearly 11 rebounds, and over two blocks per game. Jones got the seasoning and development that the Hornets couldn't give him in their rotation during a season that featured a surprising winning record. In his second season as a pro, the balance between the Hornets and Swarm began to shift more towards the NBA. He still played in 14 games in the G League, putting up strong numbers once again in Greensboro, but in year two, Kai Jones saw so much more action on the NBA floor, appearing in 46 games for the Hornets, averaging 3.4 points and 2.7 rebounds in 12 minutes per game. But unfortunately, overall, Charlotte took a huge step back, winning just 27 games. 
news. But the good news was that they had a big man in Jones who they believe could potentially develop into a core piece in the future. In fact, Jones even had a viral moment in the offseason. We're talking about a man that posterized Victor Webinyama during the summer league. People were there to watch Victor Webinyama play. And instead, they saw Kai Jones dunking all over him. But unfortunately, things would go downhill here for Jones. Shortly after all this, Kai Jones would have his career derailed in an unexpected twist. In early September, Jones began posting a series of strange and concerning social media posts. He had a series of sweaty and incoherent ramblings and dances on Instagram Live, calling into question whether Jones was under the influence of drugs or other substances. <laughs> Now, even though Jones refuted those claims, his worrying social media activity didn't stop. On Twitter, he said he could beat a prime Shaquille O'Neal in one-on-one, -on -one, as well as LeBron James. He called out his teammates LaMelo Ball and Brandon Miller, saying he had a higher field goal percentage and none of them could guard him. He trashed his teammates Mark Williams and Nick Richards on Instagram, and this was apparently a response to his teammates unfollowing him on social media. He even said that he had a better mid-range jumper than Michael Jordan, who was the team's owner when Charlotte drafted him. Now, my own own personal theory at the time was Ty Jones was having a manic episode. He exhibited all the classic signs of a manic episode. I don't know if Ty Jones was diagnosed as bipolar or if he was schizophrenic, and I don't know if he induced some sort of drug to trigger this manic episode, but saying that you're better than the star player on your team or better than Michael Jordan, or you could beat LeBron James in a one-on-one, -on -one, typically, if you're having a manic episode, you could ascend to a level where you think that you are quite literally God. So that was my personal theory. Reports being began to emerge that the Hornets were worried about Jones as the team weighed their options on what to do with him ahead of their training camp. At the end of December, the Charlotte Hornets made their decision. Charlotte announced that Jones would remain away from the team indefinitely, saying in a statement that he would not be participating in training camp due to personal reasons. I view this as Charlotte's last ditch attempt to get Jones some help while he was still on the team, but it seems like Jones unfortunately ruined this, responding on Twitter by predicting better days and repeatedly calling himself the GOAT and God. A little over a week later, Jones publicly requested a trade from the Hornets, a move that violated the collective bargaining agreement, which could have opened him up for a fine or suspension. Instead, the Hornets simply just released him two days later, cementing his rapid and dramatic fall out of Charlotte and the NBA. Jones publicly responded to the news by once again calling himself the GOAT. He had begun to release music, which even then caught the attention of fellow Longhorn Kevin Durant. But in terms of basketball, his future seemed bleak. There are rumors that the Clippers were looking into signing Jones after an early season knee injury to Mason Plumlee, which was projected to keep him out for months. Months. However, they ended up signing veteran Daniel Tice instead. In late November, Jones would go on a podcast to discuss his exit from Charlotte and gave his perspective to what happened. I know you requested yeah. a trade before right. they um, waived you, or yeah. what, what was that? So, like, what was the final straw in Charlotte? So, they had they were a little concerned about the social media stuff, right? Yep. And they were concerned about my sleeping patterns. They're like, bro, because my great grandma had just passed away. Yeah. And they're like, we hope that isn't like bothering you too much. And I was going through some things off the floor, like any person is. And they're like, man, Kyle, we just want you to get right. We want you to see a therapist. At this time, I'm stubborn. I'm like, bro, I do not want to see a therapist. I just want to meditate and like clear my head and figure out on my own. You know, use my intuition to figure out my own issues. Yep. They're like, nah, you should go to a therapist. And I'm like, bro, I don't want to go to one, right? So anyway, they're like, all right, Kai, please go to therapy. I end up going, right? I feel like the therapy's not helping. And Mitch tells me I'm not allowed to do training camp. When he tells me that, that was when I was like, yo, I'm off of this team. Like, how can I play here? They're not letting me do training camp. Like, they're gonna, they're not allowing me to try out for my position, right? So I'm upset. I'm like, yo, I just want to leave now. I'm going to leave. And I just decided to leave. And then uh, after and a couple of days, like you get, so after you, request a trade yeah so I, mitch was like nobody was really gonna you we feel like you don't have any trade value that's what mitch told me yeah i said why not I don't know. i'm breaking it down to him why i think i do right and he doesn't think I do, so I'm like, okay, fine. With the NBA seemingly uninterested, Jones turned his focus towards his national team. In January, Jones committed to play for the Bahamas Senior National Basketball Team in the first window of the 2025 FIBA America qualifiers. In February, Jones took the court once again and showed plenty of bounce and skill that made him such a high NBA draft pick in the first place. He had some strong performances, which would ultimately garner interest from a team that was growing increasingly desperate. In late January, the Philadelphia 76ers endured what was ultimately 
ultimately their worst case scenario. A serious injury to reigning MVP Joel Embiid. Diving for a loose ball against the Warriors, Embiid suffered what looked to be a significant leg injury and he couldn't finish the game. About a week later, he underwent a successful meniscus procedure in his left knee, which would be re-evaluated in four weeks. There's still no set date for Embiid to return, although reports suggest that he is targeting a return before the playoffs. Embiid himself stated that his goal was to play in the final few games of the regular season before the playoffs, although the postseason isn't as firmly in Philly's future plans as it once was. In late January, the 76ers were third in the Eastern Conference standings. Now, they wouldn't even make it to the playoffs outright, forcing them to compete in the play-in tournament. Even with a breakout season from first-time All-Star Tyrese Maxey, the 76ers have been downright awful without Embiid. The 76ers have filled their MVP-sized void at center with backups Paul Reed and Mo Bamba, and while they've had their moments, the 76ers began looking for more front court help in early March. Shams Charania reported that the team was bringing in Jones for a meeting and a workout. With a roster spot open and a nagging pull to fill in the front court, the 76ers decided to pull the trigger. News broke that Philadelphia was planning on signing Kai Jones to a 10-day contract, officially bringing him back to the NBA. The move will also create a Bahamas reunion with Jones teaming up with his fellow countryman Buddy Heald, one of only two accounts Jones follows on Twitter. In addition to hoping that he's moved past his erratic social media behavior, the 76ers may believe that pairing Jones with Heald can stabilize Jones in a way that his environment in Charlotte never could. If he still possesses the athleticism that he showed playing for the Bahamas last month, then this could end up being an excellent signing for the 76ers. After all, what do they have to lose with a team in a free fall down the standings? There's not much financial risk here either. If Jones doesn't work out, he'll be gone in less than two weeks, and it will have cost the team very little. But if he flashes the potential he once had entering the league, then this could end up becoming just the first step in one of the more unlikely NBA comebacks in recent memory. I really hope that the Philadelphia 76ers looked at Kai Jones's behavior, understood what it was, and make sure that they put him in an environment where he could succeed and thrive. I hope Kai Jones doesn't repeat any patterns in his behavior that could also trigger said mania. And that's assuming that my theory about his behavior is correct. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think Kai Jones can make a comeback? I think he has all the potential in the world to one day become an all-star. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm Drop It or Mike. Until our next upload.